ورفع درجات من أحسن في عمله وأخلص لله في سره وجل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وآله لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل وسلم على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أبلك والخاتم لما سبق ناصر الحق بحق والهادي إلى سراتك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدره أقدر العظيم قال الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقيته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله قولوا قولا سديدا تسليلكم وأعمالكم وأغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يدعي الله ورسوله فألف هذا فوز عظيم We are thankful to the Almighty Allah who has made us, um, united us into one community. Because the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has indicated to us that Muslims or believers are but one brotherhood. He has also indicated that in terms of a relationship, most believers are like a wall, the blocks of which strengthen each other. It is the best thing for us to happen that we are united. We should work together and ensure the development of our country. So that we can draw goodness and good things into our country. And then we prevent the occurrence of evil in our country. This thing, this uh, situation that we find ourselves in is something that is unusual, very unfamiliar to us. Mm. Now, anything that happens to us also is something as destined by God. Allah has indicated in the Holy Quran mm. whatever affliction descends upon you, it is by the leave of, of Allah. Hmm. Whatever happens in the land and in ourselves, then Allah has already predetermined it in the in the in the uh, guarded tablet. Let us all fear Allah. What is the fear of Allah? Upholding the commandment of Allah and eschewing anything that Allah has prohibited. When you fear Allah, things will become easy for you. You will obtain your aspirations and expectations in life. When you fear Allah, even the plot of your enemies will not have effect on you. Mm. When you, you fear Allah, whatever machinations your enemies plot against you will never have effect on you. If you are interested in getting the Jannah, just fear Allah. Because the Jannah has been prepared only for those who fear Allah. The key to open all goodness in life is in the fear of Allah. Anything that happens in the world, as far as the believer is concerned, then it has certain good in it. Even when it comes in the form of a, a test or affliction, it must have something good in it. Whenever it's a favor from God also, then already it's something good for him. 
whenever he gets the grace of Allah, then what should he do to respond? He must be grateful to Allah. So therefore, the thankfulness to Allah then becomes something good for him. Whenever an affliction or misfortune befalls him also, then he must be patient. Then the patience becomes something good for him. No one will obtain this kind of status except the one who believes in Allah. Allah has taught us in the Quran, do not disrespect or despise your, your fellows. Do not uh, draw them into contempt. Allah. Hmm. Do, do not hold your fellow in contempt. Don't do things that will mock at him. For adventure, the one that you hold in contempt is the one who has a superior position in the sight of Allah. Do not blame or censure each other, despise each other. Now Allah then indicates to us, then it means that we represent each other, I'm you and you are me. Then Allah is indicating to us that as fellows, let us not disrespect each other. Mm. Mm. He said, do not disrespect yourselves. So I am you and you are me. So if you disrespect me, you disrespect yourself. And then if I blame you, I blame myself. Do not call unto yourself with contemptible names, because if you do so, then you are disrespecting each other. All these are prohibited by Allah. And also, do, do not bite each other. Now. Would you want to devour the flesh of your own brother when he, when he dies? Would you want to do so? At, at the time when he is dead? This one is the condition of the, the, the flesh that has been mentioned. When that flesh of the human being is brought to you, I mean, really, you will not be able to, to devour to, to eat it. So therefore, do not buy, buy it your brother, because when you do so, then you devour his flesh. No. Evil is it is that you give unto your, your, your brother an evil nickname. Because in the list of things that I have mentioned, you have done just one of them. Any one of them is disobedience to God, it's indecency. Mm. This one is the evil thing that you can ever do is to do any one of these disobedient behaviors. If you disrespect your bread, then you have been disobedient to God. If you blame him, you disrespect him, you have also been disobedient to God. Now, also, if you backbite him, you have similarly been disobedient to God. That's why Allah says, evil it is that you embark in all these things that he has mentioned. And do not spy upon each other. Things that the, the, the shortfalls of your friend that are hidden, do not reveal them. Now, do not do not investigate into such shortcomings. If you go ahead to be investigating the shortcomings of your brother, there will come a day when Allah will also reveal your deficiencies. And then Allah will subject you to shame. Imam Malik has said, he came to Medina, then he met some people, 
they do not have any any blame on them. But that what they do is to talk about other people. Then Allah Himself made them fall into some indecent acts. So now then people began talking about them. He also met some a group of people. They have some deficiencies. But they, they kept silent and they were content with their own deficiencies. Then people also kept silent about, about them. The Prophet Muhammad has said that there are three things associated with his nation, that is his, his, his community. The one, the first one, he said, bad suspicion. Bad suspicion. And then also good good kind of uh, suspicion, supposition. Then you must think good, positively about people. These two things, there's nothing that is better better than, than them. That that you that you will think positively about Allah and think positively about people also. Then three other things too, there's nothing more evil than those things. That you think negatively about God and think negatively about people. Hmm. No. Allah has indicated in the Quran. Naam. He has indicated that if you if you backbite your brother and, and he compared it with the, the most serious of evil things, what, what did he use? Mm. Yeah, so Allah now compared it with something that you will detest. And that is the flesh of your brother who is dead, that you were compelled to eat. Will you eat it? Your dead brother, his flesh, you will never want to eat. Therefore, let's all be on our guard. Secondly, um, um, uh, that suit saying that you think negative to true suit saying or bad omen when you are traveling to do something then you met somebody who is a cripple or somebody who is blind person just for meeting such a disabled person then you you, you concluded that where you are going there's there's bad omen this thing you have done the wrong thing You have something kind of divination. He said, No, discard this kind of thinking and go ahead and pursue your mission. So, therefore, the first thing that I will add that you have negative thoughts with God, and that you have negative thoughts with other people. Again, Nam. That's the divination. The third one that you are envious, envy. What is envy? The, the favors that Allah has done to your brother, your wish is that he will lose that favor so that you will get or it goes to any of your brothers. This one is envy. But that if Allah gives favor to your brother, but that is, you also wish that Allah will favor you, that that one is, is not envy, but it's something that, a good wish. That one is not envy. But whenever you wish for the destruction of the, the, the favor, or it comes to you, or it comes to your brother, then that one is envy. But that if you wish that what favors Allah has done to him, that similar things be done to you, that one is that one is not envy. That one is called al gifta. That one is best wishes, and that one is lawful for you to do. So therefore, let's endeavor. This thing that has come that we are not used to. We pray to Allah. 
Now, that the prayer, prayer or invocation is the very spirit of devotion. Why is it that? Why is it the essence of devotion? Because we take refuge in Allah. That is why it is considered as the essence of devotion. So let us all be prayerful. Let's pray Allah and acknowledge the favors of Allah on our nation. So that we pray for Allah to increase the favors. Mm. That Allah should increase the favors. For him, as a condition for increase of favors, we must be thankful to him. But if we are ungrateful to him, then may Allah forbid what will happen. For Allah has said that if I favor you and you are grateful, I will increase the favor. Allah has spoken to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The favors that I have And that is one sign of your gratefulness to God. But this does not apply only to the Prophet Muhammad. But it applies to the whole of the community of Muslims. When Allah has favored you, be thankful to him. And when he favors you, he, must, he wants to see the sign of favor on you. That is the sign of your gratefulness. But if you are ungrateful, when you are ungrateful, now. Mm. Therefore, it is incumbent that we, 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 we show gratefulness to Allah. Especially in Ghana, we are in peace. Together with the practices of other faith. What is it that is between us and those who do not pray like we do? What is it that is between us? Allah says that we must live with them with kindness and peace. And we must be kind to them. We must be fair to them. Like Allah says in the Quran. Allah does not pre pre prevent you with respect to those who, who are unbelievers. They have fought you because of your faith. Nor have they chased you out of your homes. Now, Allah does, not, Allah does not prevent you respect to your, 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 those who, who are not Muslims that you deal with them with kindness. Allah has not prevented you from dealing with them justly. That is how what Allah says in the Quran. These are non-Muslims. They don't pray like you. But Allah has, they, they have not deprived you from praying. They have not chased you out of your homes. Now, Allah has not prevented you from being good to them and to be fair and, and just to them. No. But what Allah prevents you is only about those who fought you with because of your faith and chased you out of your homes. So, no. It is those that Allah says do not take them for friends. But whoever takes them for friends, then he is a wrongdoer. Those things that Allah said to the people of Mecca. Naam. What did he say to the people of Mecca? Naam. He said he's told to the people of Mecca of old, you, you know my favors on you. I don't, or don't you see and recognize what I have done for you? So, but you know, you know what I've done. Then we provided for you a holy sanctuary, a sanctuary of peace. This one is a condition, it describes the condition in which you were. Because at the time, nations surrounding you, they were being young, they were, they were being taken away, and they were being killed. They were being killed. They were being killed and kidnapped, but you are, you are living in peace. Have you, are you blind to, to this kind of grace? Just why, why don't you be grateful to me? The same similarly, this applies to the people of Ghana. Allah is speaking to us. Allah says that, oh, you people of Ghana, are you blind? But if you are blind, we, God, God, we know what we have done to you. Because we have given you a land which has become a peaceful land. And you are living in peace. Uh,
uh, in your diversity, you pr practice of different faith, you are living in peace. At a time when nations surrounding you are suffering co conflict and they are killing each other, they are kidnapping themselves. What, Allah, what, what is Allah calling us to do? Because of this grace, Allah is calling on us to be grateful to him. Therefore, Allah, we are grateful to you. You told us that when you favor us, and, and we are grateful you will increase your favor. Therefore, we are grateful to you. This grace that you have done to us of peace, we want you to increase, increase, increase our faith, the favor of our nation. So we can live in peace and harmony. This nation, Ghana, may Allah increase harmony, stability, and peace and security. The leaders that Allah has given unto us, and his vice, sovereignty and dominion is with him, and he gives kingdom to whomsoever he wills. He decides to kill and cause death. And he's able to give life. He is able to raise, elevate, and also to debase. That is the expression of his kingdom. Because it is with Allah. Allah has the power and he gives the power to whomsoever he wills. Therefore, Allah must help them. Amen. 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 Amen.
وزوب حيبتي والمشي في تقلا وازمر اللون على عجل عين تزدري بأين مجرى إن الغميلة ترتاق وانجل عين آدم شفر واسم جبيله رسول الله يولغ القاصاب أزج وعبنا وتلقيها مجور وليته كنسا وساد وساق وآل واسغاب مدى قول شيق أبرق بدانا والمرهاب ما شاء الله ما شاء الله الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله ما لا يزولنا مباشرة أن 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 أن